Oh, it's time for another math easy solution. We're going to discuss uh, further into economics and look at marginal cost versus average cost. Basically, uh, in my earlier video I showed what marginal cost was. Now we're going to look at it comparing it to average cost and what this is. And now I'm going to show that if average cost is minimum, then marginal cost has to equal average cost. Now, before we get to that, I'm going to just to recap on what the cost function is. It's basically just the total cost of produced X amount of items here. And also recap on marginal cost from our previous video, you can watch on the Dropbox link below. Basically, it's just the, the derivative of the cost function. This is C of X, the big C of X. And this, yes, or just a rate change of it. And you could also approximate it to equal cost to produce one more item. Because remember, derivative is instantaneous, so it's a limit as, well, delta X goes to zero. But in this case, in real life, we usually have real integers, so we, we would have to go with uh, one item and versus you can't have a fraction so that's why in, you could basically approximate this and it's more in the video of marginal costs but um, yeah so it, this is true if you have x is a large number for example if you have a thousand cars you you're making and then the marginal cost to produce yeah basically yeah, marginal cost is just the cost to produce the thousand and first car and this is one car is very small compared to a thousand cars but yeah, anyways, you can watch us in the previous video on marginal cost. Okay, so this is basically a typical cost function here. It's and this is the basic amount of items here. So as you're producing more items initially, the marginal cost, which is the derivative, remember it's just a tangent line to it, keeps decreasing. So as you're increasing, it's decreasing here until you get to an inflection point, and then it starts to increase or the slope starts to increase higher and higher this is the slope or the yeah the slope to the cost function or the marginal cost increases and, and the reason for this little uh, two stage uh, graph here I'll show you why for first this right this is an inflection point yes and uh, to explain this it's uh, basically as this part here before the inflection point it is decreasing here the marginal cost that's because of ec economies of scale and this is what it, this just means is that there's more efficient use of the fixed cost of, of production, which means that as you're producing more and more, uh, let's say cars, for example, let's say if, if you build one car, the, the cost of making one is really high, but then to make the second one is really easy because you already have the fixed cost in place, you already know how to make the car, so it'd be much faster to make it. So that's why this is getting decreasing, marginal cost decrease, and it's concave downwards in this case. And in this case here, it's going to be concaving up. Oh, this is a d, d not yeah, just concave down. Yeah, and this is just concave up. And then this uh, at the inflection point, well, basically, eventually there will be an inflection point, and the cost will concave up upwards or marginal cost increase. And this is basically because of overtime costs or just inefficiencies of large scale operation. What this means is you got to pay. Uh, extra because if you're building even more you're gonna have to pay for overtime people have to work longer and yeah and pass their re usual hours and also inefficiencies it means if you if you're building too much cars for example you're gonna have to store them somewhere and you'll get to a point where it just costs more to store them than actually just making less okay so now that I've gone through the recap the marginal cost and um, and the cost function then let's look at the average cost here the average cost is basically cost per item when x amount of items are produced and this is written let's just write it as small c c of x and this is just a function of well cost the total cost to produce x items or the cost function is divided by x so this is divided by this and we're going to get the average cost per item and also an interesting point is that this is just a slope of the line that joins the origin to the point x uh, x c of x here just put another bracket here on on the cost function here so basically that is that's all it is is here is just a slope here so say you have at this point this is x this is c of x then the slope which is never rise of a run yeah it's rise of a run I'll just move this concave up here so the slope is just rise of a run here and this is c of x this is just the average cost here or the slope so you could see graphically from the cost function here and also, if you were to graph c of x, yeah, if you were to graph the average cost here, well, you, you recall that uh, if you go to zero items, this one kind of goes to infinity because you're dividing by zero, so you're going to have something like this. So you're going to have something like this here, and it keeps going down here. And But then as you're increasing here, you can even see from this function here, this is the c of x is increasing faster than the, uh, as you go x here. So it's, it's 
concaving up. So what you will actually have is the graph will look something like this. It would have to start increasing here and you're going to have an absolute minimum here. Now, if there's an absolute minimum here, this just means yeah, we could find an absolute minimum average cost. So we could use our derivative rules, our calculus rules that I showed in my previous videos to basically derive this one and see when this occurs. So let's just take the derivative here to get the critical point. So C of X, this equals two. Well, well actually before that, let's just write the, the function here and then I'm just gonna rewrite it as as this just so I don't have to apply it. the quotient rule you can just apply the product rule in this case so now this one is just going to be equal to well derivative of this is just c prime of x using product rule see my video on the dropbox link below for it and then so this times this one plus the derivative of uh, well plus c of x and then the derivative of this one here this, this derivative is going to be negative 1 over x squared using power rule and if we rewrite this a bit better, you're gonna look, have something like this. So now we wanna get times by common denominators in this case, so x over x here, so we get x squared. We're gonna get, yeah, we're gonna get over this one here. So just remember the capital C's is, is referring to uh, the total cost, and then this one is, or the cost function, this is just the average cost here. So now when this is zero from the graph, it has to be the minimum is, is when basically C of x is equal to zero. So that is when it's minimum here. That's just a critical point here. So if we set it equal to zero in this case, now we have this one, we just times it out, this goes away. This is only zero if, because this one, yeah, just times it out, you're gonna get it out. It is only zero if the derivative or marginal cost times x minus total cost is equal to zero. So if we rearrange this one, we're gonna get c prime of x is equal to cost function divided by x and this is just our cost function here and this what this is saying is marginal cost is equal to the average cost here yeah so this is basically what I stated in the in the start of the video basically when marginal cost equal average cost then the average cost is minimum and we just proved it using our calculus derivative rules here now this principle that we just uh, stated here, it is plausible because if our marginal cost is smaller than our average cost, this means let's say you're you're making stuff at ten dollars a per item here. If you could, if you were to uh, build the next one, it's going to cost if it costs you nine dollars to make another car, for example. Uh, if you're go going at ten per car, then you're obviously going to you're obviously going to uh, produce more, and if you produce more then uh, then you're going to lower your average cost here because now you're going to have you have to because you have to do the average cost again here but then since the other one's going to be lower per that last car you're going to be lowering it until the point where you basically equals it and if in this case if the marginal cost is larger than our average cost then you're going to produce less here because what it what it means is that it, it your average cost, if you're to produce another item, is going to cost more than you're averaging here. So you want to keep lowering it until your average cost is lowered here, and then if it's lower, until the point where it equals here. So basically, you try to, try to find an equilibrium when it's equaling, and then at that point, you're going to have average cost and minimum here. Well, that's all for it. I'm going to do uh, another video uh, probably tomorrow uh, on in some examples using using these principles that we just stated here and basically just examples on marginal cost average cost and the cost function here well that's all for today hopefully you learned uh, a bit or two about economics here and, uh, and you can always download these notes in the dropbox link below and uh, stay tuned for another math easy